Hello, hello everyone. I'm Lucinda Bassett, in case you didn't know who you're looking at or listening to, whatever it is. And I'm here to tell you that um, it's November. Oh my God, do you even believe that, you guys? I mean, I don't know about you, but like this year has gone so fast. I don't know why my light won't stay on, but it's not far for me. Anyway, um, I can't even, I don't know where time went, and I don't know if you're ready for Thanksgiving. I'm. You know, according to what we're seeing on the news, there aren't going to be enough turkeys. There's not going to be enough pumpkin pie. But we're going to run out of everything. So go to the store tomorrow and get your pumpkin and your, your whipping cream and um, your sweet potatoes and especially your turkey because they say we're going to run out of turkeys. Tonight, we're going to talk about the freedom of letting go. And it's a really important topic because so much of what messes with us and makes us anxious is when we get stuck in we get stuck in um, in our anger or our bitterness or our rejection or we get stuck in trying to it's, it's we're trying to trying to please everybody or we get stuck in um, guilt, shame, blame, jealousy, envy, um, bitterness, you know, um, irritability, um, when we let things hang on us, when, if you're someone who's an obsessive thinker, where you get into trouble is when you take something and you dwell on it over and over again, and you go to bed at night and your mind is spinning and you're thinking about, you know, why did he say that? Or why did that happen to me? Or why aren't they treating me fairly? Or, you know, and, and we are sensitive people with anxiety. And so we're the kind of people that expect everybody to treat us the way that we treat them. And lo and behold, very rarely does that happen because most of us are givers and some people are takers. And we've had that conversation before. But tonight, what we're here to talk about is the freedom, the peace of mind, the ability to calm yourself and have a more mature response to something that's got you upset it's all in the let go. So I'm here tonight to ask you, what are you holding on to? Um, anger, rejection, these toxic emotion, worry, fear, uh, judgment of yourself or others, feeling, feelings that you know of inferiority, that you're not enough. Um, these toxic emotions are very uh, poisonous, and they hold you back and they keep you from moving forward. And also, you know, they're infectious. So, you know, if you're, if you're holding on to bitterness, anger, jealousy, um, whatever it is, um, it's going to make you feel more anxious. You're going to lay awake at night, lie awake at night, thinking about things that are bothering you. And, um, and you're not going to feel calm. You're not going to feel at peace with yourself. So what we're talking about tonight is, it's really the name of the show, Let Go of Lucinda. The freedom is in the let go. Um, the key to success and happiness in life, believe it or not, is, is to let go and not overthink things, not dwell on something to the point where it literally makes you sick. And, and I'm talking about this because I'm guilty of it myself. You know, if there's one thing that I tend to do is I tend to overthink and I tend to over worry and I tend to overreact. And, and that's part of the reason you guys love me <laughs> is because you know I get it when you call me and say, oh my God, you know, uh, my sister said this or my best friend said this or my son said this. And, and you're sitting there worrying and overreacting. And I get it because I do the same thing. And so, it, but it's my job to help you understand um, yes, the freedom of happiness is in the let go. And, and that is so true. And so there's a, you know, there's a lot of ways to look at this, but the harder you try to hold on to anger and bitterness, those are, those are two really toxic emotions or jealousy um, or, you know, the, the, the uh, victim stuff. Nobody gets me. Nobody understands me. Um, you know, the harder you and the, the strong, stronger hold you have on that toxic negative energy, 
the harder it is to be happy. You need to diffuse that negative energy and really focus on the let go. And that's graciousness, kindness. Um, it's kind of like um, when you let go and forgive, you create this open heart for, for your higher self, your spirit self, your God self to come in and calm you down. You know, your, your brain knows what's going on and your brain is, is, is programmed to protect you from hurting yourself with your toxic negative thinking. And that's why some of you get that feeling that a lot of us with anxiety get that we all hate called the bewilderment feeling. Does anybody get that? You know what I'm talking about? You're sitting there and all of a sudden you feel like I can't think clearly. I'm not, I, I, I can't concentrate. Um, I feel flustered. I feel like I'm spinning. Um, I feel like I'm in a fog. That's all a biochemical reaction that your brain creates because it's trying to calm you down and it's trying to help you step away from your negative energy that you're creating. And, and you know, it, it's so hard because we are overreactors and we're extremely sensitive people. And, and why are we talking about this right now? Well, a lot of people are coming out of this, this COVID experience and we're not out of it, but, and they're struggling with, you know, anxiety and anger and, the new normal, and we're about to move into Thanksgiving and Christmas and Hanukkah, and we're all wondering, you know, well, is it safe to be with family? Is it safe to get on a plane? And, and if you turn on the news, so much of it is negative. It's like, oh my God, American Airlines is canceling 2,000 flights, and the earth is in trouble with global warming. I mean, if it goes on and on and on, you know, there's shootings and there's robberies and there's, you know, and, and you sit and you shake your head and you say, there's a lot to be angry about. There's a lot to be angry of. And um, how do I take control when I'm sitting here? I'm on myself overthinking everything. And that's what I'm talking about right now. Um, it's very, very hard to let go of angerness, bitter, and hurt. But it's harder to stay, to stay stuck in the bitterness and anger. Because it's kind of a funny thing, you know, bitterness, anger, and, and, and victimization they are um, almost, you feed, the more you feel it, you feed it. And the more you feed it, the more you feel it. And then you can, you can get stuck in a rut where you just kind of want to stay home and sit there and feel like crap. And the worst thing you can do is stay home and sit there. You know, if you can get up and take a hike or get on a treadmill or call a friend or, you know, or watch something funny, because the idea is to get yourself out of a moment of being stuck in negativity. You were not meant to live in a world of anger and fear. God did not put you on this earth to be bitter and resentful. And envious. God put you on this earth to be happy and joyful and to be good energy for the world and for other people. And that is a choice you have to make. And you know, it really sucks. I mean, I have people that I'm coaching like, oh, but I feel like I have to make that choice every day, every morning. Yes, sometimes you do. And sometimes you don't. Sometimes, you know, depending on what you ate the night before, whether or not you had alcohol the night before, whether or not you're in a loving relationship, uh, whether or not you feel financially secure. But, you know, but sometimes it just comes down to um, how was your night before? Did you watch something negative on TV? Did you drink maybe too many glasses of wine. Did you eat toxic food? Well, what's toxic food? Okay, toxic food is like the worst thing you can do is before you go to bed, sit and eat sugar. Have a bowl of ice cream. I know people used to do that. <laughs> I don't know if they do that anymore. Uh, two glasses of wine and finish it off with a bowl of ice cream and you go to bed and can't sleep and you're going, oh, I can't sleep, what's wrong with me? Well, that's toxic food. So, you know, we're here to talk about what does it mean to let go? What does it mean to really truly in a moment, it's easy to let go when you're, you know, at an amusement park having fun, or you're on vacation sitting on the beach, or you know, you just cashed a check that you were counting on getting, you know, in the mail, or you know, maybe you got a bonus, or you know, who knows? Maybe you got something you didn't expect. Maybe you went out and bought so many great deals on cars right now. It's tempting to go out and buy a car, but you know, it's easy to feel good and let go when you're living in the moment, having fun. What, what's hard and challenging is when you're stressed out, when you're worried, 
when you're anxious, when you're angry, when you're envious, um, when you're in the have not mode, or you think someone doesn't understand you, or you feel like you're spinning and worrying about everything, how do you let go? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I heard somebody go, mm. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so how do you let go? All right, you guys, well, what you understand about the let go is that it is a universal energy. And we, oh God, I just got a new sound bowl I have to play for you because of the energy of the sound bowl. I'll play it before we do our breath session. Um, and this is a really good example. I took an hour and a half away to buy a sound bowl because my little beautiful little grandson, Fox, threw a rock into my favorite sound bowl and broke it. Ah! Now I can get hung up on that and say, oh my God, that's bad karma. That's, a, that's the third eye bowl. What's going to happen as a result of that? But no, instead I said, all right, he didn't know what he was doing, obviously. And I'm going to drive to Laguna, which is my favorite place in the whole world anyway. And I'm going to buy a sound bowl. And I walk into the store and I went all this way. And all I wanted was the smallest sound bowl. And what do you think they didn't have? They didn't have that sound bowl. And I, at first I was like, oh my God, I just drove an hour and a half. This is the only place I know to get it. Um, it's exactly the one I want. And this girl's like, well, this is, a, try this one. You know, this is the heart sound bowl, the heart chakra which I, I thought, all right, you know what? I'll try it. I don't really want this one. I, I kind of have one like it. And I was spinning. I was like, I want the one that I wanted. I drove an hour and I have to get it. I need to replace it. I know you guys know what I mean. And instead I picked up the, the little um, drum, the drumstick and I hit the ball and I started to play it. By the way, it's not an easy thing to play these sound balls. You think it is, but it isn't. I started to play it and it just started going, and before I knew it, the whole store was vibrating. I'm not kidding you. Everybody in the store was like, oh, my God. And they flocked over to me and the sound bowl. And they're like, oh, my God, that's the most beautiful sound. And my heart was like singing that I could provide that kind of energy in my space and draw these people in. And that's the power of the let go. I let go of my need to get the one I wanted. And I opened my heart to a different sound bowl. And lo and behold, it's the most amazing sound bowl I've ever heard in my life. And I brought it home. And there's a spiritual reason I bought that sound bowl. And I must need the heart chakra sound bowl. And I must need this one. And so one of the, the most effective things you can do when you're stuck in a moment of anger, resentment, bitterness, poor me, I'm a victim, nobody loves me, nobody understands, is go back to the freedom, the peace of mind. It's all in the let go. How do I let go so that I can be present and open my arms and my brain to what, what I should be doing in this moment? All right, so let's talk about what you can do. First of all, when you get stuck in a moment, I, I still love that. I love that stuck in a moment. You know that song? You've got stuck in a moment and you can't get out of it. I love that song. So when you get stuck in a negative moment, I want to call it toxic moment, okay? First thing I want you to do is put up a stop sign. Just stop right there, wherever you're at. I don't know if you're not, if you're driving, don't pull over. <laughs> okay. Uh, but you might want to pull over actually, but pull up, put up that stop sign and just say, stop. I want you to catch yourself before you wreck yourself. I don't know if you've ever heard that saying, because you have two options. There are two forks in the road. One is you go off to the left and you go, you know, oh my God. How long is this going to last? Why do I feel this way? Why did they say that to me? They don't really love me. Nobody understands me. You know, what if I lose my job? What if I end up alone? What if I'm anxious forever? What if there's something wrong with me? What if I have cancer? The what if syndrome in a negative way, or you can go off to the right. And it's a choice you make right in that toxic moment. You choose which direction you're going to go in. You go off to the right and you say, I'm going to put up the stop sign and I'm going to breathe. So it's a step and you might want to write this down. Number one, when you're in a toxic moment and we all know what they are, you're being negative, you're being judgmental, you're hurting yourself, 
you, how do I know it's a toxic moment? Because you feel like shit. <laughs> okay. You know what? God, I feel terrible. I'm angry. I feel anxious. I want to spin and run. I want to, you know, call somebody and complain the C word. <laughs> okay. Complain. I want to, I want to, I want to vent. Um, I want to tell everybody I'm mad. I feel taken advantage of. Does this, is this anything any of you are feeling? Um, stop, put up the stop sign and say, I'm going to stop this right now. I'm going to stop this toxic bleed. And number two, I'm going to breathe. You've been sitting here with me for a year and a half. You better know how to breathe. <laughs> you know, I was coaching somebody the other day and I think he's on here. <laughs> I might've told you this anyway. And I'm, and I'm saying, all right, we're going to set your intentions. And now I'm going to breathe you. I'm sorry if you lose me. I have to get my mic fixed in this, um, in this computer um and i'm breathing him to set his intentions and all of a sudden the phone goes dead and i call him back and i call him back and i call him back and he doesn't it's the phone i'm like oh my god i hope he didn't die on me <laughs> he didn't he just had to go off and teach class <laughs> but you know all right so when you get into a toxic moment you're going to stop yourself check yourself before you wreck yourself you can even use that up oh, there's a stop sign I'm going to check myself right here before I wreck myself. What do I mean by wreck myself? Before you text somebody, a text you regret. Before you call somebody and say things you wish you wouldn't have said. Before you um, cancel a date with your boyfriend because you're too tired and too anxious to deal with it. Before you cancel the girlfriend lunch because you're not in a good mood. Sometimes what you need most is to go ahead and, and meet your boyfriend and go to lunch with your girlfriend, and go play tennis or take the dog for a walk. The thing you feel least like doing, which is, you know, feeding the positive is what you need to do the most. So number one, write this down, stop sign, check yourself before you wreck yourself. You don't want to go off to the right into a train wreck. You want to go off to the left. Anyway, yes, actually, I like to say the left is the calm place. I said the right is the calm place. The truth is the right to me is more the train wreck side and the left, because, and I say that because your left hand is, is all about you when you breathe and universally speaking, that's the receiving hand. You know, it's, it's your hand, it's all about you. Um, so going to the left, put up a stop sign, catch yourself before you wreck yourself, number one. Number two, sit back and breathe. If I sit back, you can see me better, but you probably can't hear me. So, and what do we do when we breathe? We breathe into the count of three, through our mouth, and then a short breath out. And I want you to try that. And when you breathe, you guys, you're breathing in healthy spiritual energy, really good air. You're breathing out toxins. So when you breathe like that, you can't keep thinking toxic, toxic thoughts. You're detoxifying your body, your blood cells, and your brain. So the purpose of breathing is to detoxify your brain, your body, and your blood cells. So when I tell you to stop with a stop, put that stop sign up, and then go into your breath. And if you could just breathe for two or three minutes like that. Slow your breathing down to 12 breaths per minute. And then three, begin to use positive calming affirmations to shift your thinking. Well, what does that mean, Lucinda? Okay, so now I put up a stop sign, I'm breathing, and then I say, I'm calm, God's got me. I'm going to call on my higher self. I am safe, I am where I should be. I've got this, all is good, all is well, I'm okay, I am strong, I am calm, I've got this, the universe has my back. I would strongly suggest when you finish this session tonight or even now, write down five affirmations that work for you in that moment of toxic panic. And again, I'm calm, I've got this, the universe has my back, I'm gonna stay in the moment, all is well. There's five. So use affirmations to shift your thoughts, which will in turn shift the chemicals in your brain, which will shift 
your energy and shift what you're feeling. And then four, do something in that moment that calms you down and brings you joy. So if you're driving in your car, put on one of your favorite music stations and listen to music. If you're at home, put on some music around the house, one of my favorite things to do. I highly recommend that you put on some of the breath music through Jennifer Baraz and radio and just sit down and calm yourself. Or if you want, get up, go for a walk, put on your headphones, listen to music. Music is such a great resource for calming you. So what can you do in this moment that will calm you down and bring you joy? Maybe you want to FaceTime with your grandson. Maybe you want to call your girlfriend. Maybe you want to go drive across the town and go see your fiance. <laughs> Maybe you want to go to meet somebody for dinner and a glass of wine. What could you do? In, but it's more about the moment. So the moment, what could you do in that moment? Maybe you want to you know, pick up from panic to power or the solution, open it to any page and start reading it. The solution is really great for that purpose because you can literally open it to any page and you're going to get something really positive out of it. Okay, number five, there's this woman named Mel Robbins and one of my clients turned me on to her and I suggest you Google her and you might want to listen to her on a couple of podcasts. She's very, very bright. And a lot of what she says is what, what, what I say, what we talk about, but she has an intellectual way of looking at things. And she's written a couple of books. And one of the books that she's you know, written, which sounds really simple, but it's, it, it's effective for a lot of people, is this whole idea of when you're in a toxic moment, stop and ask your, and say to yourself, count backwards from five to zero. Five, four, three, two, one. And John, if you're on, you're the one that suggested this. You said, you know what? I heard this and I liked it. So you're in a toxic moment, you put up the stop sign, you've done your breath, you're using affirmations to shift your thoughts and to shift your brain chemistry. And then you did something in the moment to give you some joy, which is putting on music, that's usually what's working for me. Um, putting something on TV that makes you smile. Maybe you light a candle that smells really good. Maybe you go jump in the shower and take a really nice shower with some sour, shower gel. What makes you, maybe you pick up your dog and cuddle your dog for a few minutes. Maybe you sit down with your child and well, there's nothing more <laughs> calming than playing with your child. And for me, my, my little 18 month old grandson. And then number five, do the five, four, two, three, two, one countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. What if it all works out? Now, I want you to do that right now. Think of something that's really bothering you. You've probably got a million things and go five, four, three, two, one. What if it all works out? And sit with that for a minute. And this is Mel Robbins' latest new little, you know, quick fix. And, and people swear by it. And so I'm encouraging you to try it because it may work for you as well. And then six, go back to your higher self energy, which is the energy that you feel when you're in the breath work and hold space there. I love those words. Hold space for yourself. So this works for your children too. Let's say you've got a really difficult teenager or 20 something on your hands and they're having a meltdown moment because sometimes they do. And before you react with anger or you react with frustration, sit back and just say to yourself, five, four, three, two, one, what if it all works out? And then be quiet. Because things do usually work out. Things usually don't go to that horrible what if worst case scenario that you and I always think of. I do it too, okay? I do it too. So I'm trying to help you understand what I do when I get into a toxic moment. So go back to your higher self energy and hold space for yourself. After you do the five, four, three, two, one, what if it all works out? Now I'm gonna sit here in my higher self energy and I'm gonna hold space for myself. If, it's, if you're arguing with your son or having an, a disagreement with your partner, hold space for them. Sit there, five, four, three, two, one. What if it all works out and then sit quietly 
and hold space. Hold space for you. Hold space for your loved one. Hold space for your dog. You know, whoever you need to hold space for, hold space. One of the things about people like us is we don't, we're not really good at being calm and we're not really good at holding space. We want to run, we want to spin, we want to fix it, we want answers, we want solutions. And if we can't get it, we'll lay there and stay awake and worry about it. At least that's what I do sometimes. <laughs> Helps a lot if you don't eat chocolate or sweets before you go to bed. I'll tell you something else, you guys. I have asthma and I have allergies. And I've been noticing, like right now I'm taking, you know, I'm just going to say allergy medication. It's just over the counter. But I notice when I take a 12 hour, what you would think would be harmless allergy medication at eight in the morning, I can't sleep at night. I'm absolutely up. I can't, it's one o'clock. This happened to me last night. I was one o'clock in the morning and I can't get to sleep and everything's on my mind. And I'm looking at my phone and I'm like, gosh, I can't sleep. Oh, it's that allergy pill I took today. So don't take a 12 hour allergy pill, take a four hour allergy pill in the morning. You know, there's ways around all of this. We create our own anxiety. Don't take Excedrin, okay? I mean, maybe Excedrin is a great medication, but it's got caffeine in it. Don't drink a tea before you go to bed and don't eat ice cream or chocolate. All right, so um, number six is go back to your higher self and hold space for yourself or whoever it is you're angry at or whatever it is you're troubled about. And then seven, now that you've calmed down and you've you've done the breath work and you you've thought to yourself, what if it all works out? Maybe spend a little time problem solving. What, What could I do to diffuse, write that word down, this problem? What could I do to have a more positive outcome? What could, how could I work with this person so I can diffuse this negative energy and come up with an outcome that makes me feel better, makes them feel better, makes everybody happier? There's got to be a solution other than getting angry, bitter, you know, jealous, envious, um, feeling sorry for yourself. None of that ever works. So seven is problem solve. And then eight, which is going back to the beginning of this whole process, let go and give it to God or let go and give it to the universe. So this is a process that I go through when I get stuck in a moment and I can't get out of it. And, you know, it's so funny because I don't know, the last couple of months people are like, yeah, but you're Lucinda Bassett. Yeah, but you're this. Yeah, but you're that. No, I'm a human being. You know, all you got to do is look at these people out there that are way more, you know, I'm not a celebrity like some of these people, and I don't really consider myself a celebrity at all, but I'm a known person. And you think because I'm an anxiety guru, you know, I don't have anxiety or I don't get angry or I don't, you know, but that's not true. I, I take good care of myself. I eat really healthy. I, you know, I work out and I, I do the things that I, Um, need to do to balance myself. But I have to tell you, since I've been back from my trip to Europe, I haven't been as diligent about the working out and I can feel it. You know, I got to get back out and take my heights. I was working out with the trainer. All of that made a huge difference in my stress levels, in my energy. And you know, there's no excuse. Don't say, oh, I'm, but I'm 65 years old. That's bullshit. One of my clients who's my age, a little, little bit younger than me, you know, he's, he's running marathons. He's doing triathlons. He's doing Ironmans, okay? And he's telling me there are 82-year-old people doing the Ironman, you know, experience, which is where you, I, I want to get this right. I think you, you um, what do you do? You ride a bike, was it you swim? And then you ride a bike and then you run like 26 miles. I mean, think about doing that at 82 years old. So there's no excuse for you at any age, letting yourself feel like shit and not taking care of yourself the way that you need to, to feel empowered. One of the things that might be happening to you is you might be saying yes all the time. (laughs) My fiance just bought us this really great book about saying no. You think I would know how to do that, but it's hard. It's hard to say no to your children who want you to babysit. It's hard to say no to your good friends who want to stop by for a glass of wine. It's hard to say no to people who want to stay at your house when you're traveling and, you know, 
take care of your animals, you know, like they're, they're people who live in another state and they're coming to town and, hey, I, you know, I mean, sometimes it, you just feel like you don't want to say no when the thing you need to do more than anything is say no. So maybe some of your angst, your anger, your bitterness is self-induced with your inability to say no. And saying no involves putting up a stop sign. And we're going to talk about that in the next um, in the next Zoom call. How to say no without feeling guilty. How to say no without coming off as a bitch, you know, um, or you know, a difficult person. How to say no and mean it. And and have people respect you more because you're saying no. So the lesson for tonight is hanging on to these toxic emotions because you are thinking obsessively or you're holding on to some kind of anger because somebody doesn't get it. That's only going to make you more miserable. And the freedom is when you can step back, put up the stop sign, breathe, Use affirmations to shift your thoughts. Do something in that moment to bring yourself joy. It can be as simple as picking up a book and reading a couple pages or petting your dog or going over and wrapping yourself up in your partner's arms. And then doing that countdown, five, four, three, two, one. What if it all works out? Then hold space for yourself. Hold space for your loved one, and sit in that energy of the universe, of God. Go back to your higher self, hold space, that beautiful higher self that you find when you breathe. And then once you've calmed down, and you've got a clear head, if you'd like to do a little bit of problem solving, you know, maybe I need to call him and talk through this tomorrow and explain what I'm feeling. You know, maybe I need to take a better look at the life she's living and stop being so envious. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm not seeing everything. Maybe there's some things about her that I'd like to emulate, you know, um, maybe she's really a good person. I'd like to hang out with her more, you know, um, maybe I'm overreacting to something somebody said, I'm going to reevaluate that. Maybe call my therapist, maybe get another opinion. Maybe I'll deal with this tomorrow when I feel better. I don't, I'm not going to think about it tonight. These are all things you can do to step back, step away, go to your higher self, and then do a little problem solving. How, and where well, the problem solving is all about how, what could I do so that this has a more positive outcome for me and the person or people that are involved. And then number eight, let go and let, and give it to God or the universe. And, and you know, What's interesting, that's my favorite one, because when you can truly let go and give it to God or the universe, they're one and the same, but you will be shocked at what happens. You know, you might meet someone new or start a new relationship or be invited into a whole experience that you never expected, be invited to be part of something that, you, that, that could change your life. So be open. Like maybe all of this that happened for a reason that's going to open a major door for you or be life-changing. No one ever gets anywhere by staying stagnant. And sometimes you have to be sh shaken up pretty hard to change. Sometimes to open your eyes and see who you really are, you have to see, you know, somebody has to throw something in your face that makes you angry <laughs> or makes you feel bad. And maybe the, the key here is that you're ready for the, the change. You're ready for the next step. You're ready for the next learning experience. So don't take everything so personally and let it shake you up. Instead, go back to the freedom, the power, and the peace of mind is in grace. The freedom, the patience, the peace of mind, it's all in the let go. So what we do is I'm going to play one of my favorite songs and um, you're gonna get in position to breathe. And it's not complicated. Some of you have done it before. Um, uh, play this song. This is by Julie Byrne. It's one of my favorite songs called Follow My Voice. And um, let's see if it's ready to go. Oh, 
This is just a beautiful song by Julie B Y R N E called Follow My Voice. And if you don't have it, I would suggest you Google her on, you know, YouTube or Spotify or Pandora. So I encourage you all now to sit back, close your eyes, put your hands on the chair you're sitting on or the sofa, grounding yourself to Mother Earth, allowing your mind to drift, trusting that it's safe to surrender to the breath work. This is your breath. This is your time. I call upon the I am presence, masters of light, and angelic forces to assist everyone here to manifest and embrace the energy of spirit with acceptance of all information that is to come to them this evening as guidance for this perfect breath session. It's safe to breathe. It's safe to be here. Breathing into the count of three, short breath out, through the mouth. Breathing into the mouth, in through the mouth, to the count of three, out through the mouth, short breath out. If you can keep your breath connected, it's don't over breathe. Breathing comes easy for you. Safe to breathe. Safe to be in my body. I invite you to embrace spirit, feeling the energy all around you, from the tips of your fingers, the top of your head, all the way down, vibrating to the tips of your toes. Breathing in. All that positive energy, good health, abundance, kindness, breathing out any negative energy that you may have this week. And breathing in compassion, joy, non judgment, acceptance. Keep your eyes closed. You can put your hands up, your palms faced out. Do you feel it? The beautiful energy throughout your body is God. This is the great I am. It is your soul. It is your life, your light, and your gift to yourself and the world. Feel the vibration radiating from you around in this space in the room, sending it out to your home, to your neighborhood. Unconditional love, warm thoughts. You are pure and loving. What a gift you are. Your body is energizing you and others around you in this moment, in this space. I want you to feel the vibration in your hands. This is your place to go when you're scared, lonely, feeling alone. This is your higher self. This is, you own this energy. It is your true, true self. Breathing into the count of three. Breathing out. Short breath. I call upon the I am presence, masters of light and angelic forces to give everyone here any information he or she may need to receive at this time. This is you. This is your true essence. Breathing in to the count of three, slower now. Do you feel breathing in all that is good? Breathing out all your worry, fear, anxiety. Let it go. I invite you to take a few moments now to come back to this space, slowly and gently grounding yourself, wiggling your toes and your fingers. 
to a constant pace, consistent breath, pace, slowing your breathing down, breathing in, breathing out, shaking your fingers, your toes, opening your eyes. I'm going to grab my sound bowl as you sit and wait for a second. that sound wall is to remind you that sometimes when things don't go the way you want them to, there's a window or a door about to open that could change your life, change your moment, and you may find it and step into something new and amazing. So until two weeks from now, when we're going to be talking about how to say no, <laughs> Go out there and make it a great week to be you, you guys. And follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Peace out.